first of all, it's a pleasure to be here. I will try to speak slow and improve my locution. And uh, yeah, that's me. Yeah, you can visit our website in English and Portuguese if you want to. Um, it's been very interesting, this conference, and I, I hope that we can promote more conferences like that, globally speaking. And I have to say that I changed a little bit of my approach today based on what you have been talking uh, yesterday. And actually, um, the crowd safety, uh, probably I wasn't a little bit unhappy with this definition there, because actually it's a highly dense populated environment, let's say. Because when you think about crowds, we think about open space, and we are working with enclosures, just to differentiate. Uh, so can I just change here? Well, just in case, you know, everything is, you know, we produce some photos, uh, or photos with pH. Well, so basically what we are approaching this work is that travel distance, you know, suggested by prescriptive codes, they might be not considered as design factor for enclosures where you have the population as an issue. You see that I'm very careful in saying might not be, you know, probably because it's, you know, uh, it's, it's, how can I say, a hypothesis. This work we have done in 2010, and believe me or not, I haven't had time to publish it. So it's good to, you know, I work as a consultant. Basically, I work installing sprinklers and smoke detectors and starting to do as well crowd modeling. And uh, so it's a good opportunity to discuss about this work. <coughs> uh, well, clearly, uh, you know, I think that the paramount word, uh, word is performance. I think all of us here, we, we should believe that performance is, is paramount. And uh, all these issues are very important, but I'll be concentrating on the time basis analysis, right? Well, clearly human factors, you know, for example, nightclubs, you have different kinds of perceptions and awareness, people can be drunk and et cetera. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that although it's very important to talk about human behavior, we will concentrate only the relation between the people and the, and the, the environment. And uh, of course, I mean, you can discuss later, you know. I know that environmental psychology is very important. You have many, many research that can be developed, uh, you know, so this can be something to be discussed. Um, you know, human behavior, if you go into depth, you can even analyze the superego and ego, and this has an influence during evacuation time, depending on, on the circumstance. But uh, we are not approaching that. I just want to make sure that uh, we are aware of that. It's very important, but it's not, it's out of our scope of our work. Thank you to, to Brian and uh, Thunderhead and Sarah, Philippe, and Samuel for the support as well. Okay, so uh, that's the content of our talk today. We will probably concentrate a little bit on the people movement models based on the discussion that we had you know, yesterday and some of the results. As we said, crowds, we are not doing this kind of crowds. There's more enclosures, that's a big church in Brazil. And we have to think that you know, an enclosure like that should be you know, different the way we think about this and let's say uh, an office, the way we define the travel distance. But before we start our talk per se, uh, I would like to talk about this based on you know, the discussions today. You know, fire safety design, fire safety management, they are paramount. You know, modeling is just a tool. And uh, um, we can use the model for both phases. <coughs> we can use to improve fire safety design. We can use for doing a risk analysis, for example. We can use for the safety management afterwards. If I change the layout of my environment, how this is going to impact uh, the relation that I have between me you know, and the other people and myself and the environment. So, you know, modeling is a tool, just like a knife. A knife is a tool I can, you know, cut a beef, uh, I can kill myself. It's just the way you use your, your tool. So when well used, it can really help a lot. So in many cases, we, we have seen uh, designs which even the guy they used wrongly the, the model or neglected uh, the smoke detection, sprinklers. So it's not a matter of uh, you know, blaming, let's say, modeling itself. And we have so, made so much you know, work that has been produced by NIST and FPA and SFP. It's worth to read this as well. 
Well, um, the, the UK regulations uh, can be summarized uh, like that. And uh, I, really, I really believe that's a very strong and, and useful uh, approach. <coughs> Why? Because, for example, the ADB, which is for Wales and England, probably you guys know as well, is a prescriptive code. But it does give space in the very beginning for alternative solutions. Uh, as they say, finding new solutions or performance-based. So it's not only black and white. You can mix solutions with prescriptive and performance-based. And uh, it's available. You have this document as well. Uh, but as engineers, uh, this is very important. Uh, engineers, architects, fire safety standards. They can be the best standard, um, but they will only bring, you know, recommend minimal level of safety. And in some cases, uh, the safety might be more complex. And that's where we as engineers, we should be always try to look beyond the black box. So that's very important. Not take uh, this document, let's say, as a Bible and then follow. Sometimes, you know, it might not be completely accurate. And the question, how safe is safe? It should be asked all the time, how safe is safe? You know, if this building is mine, very likely uh, we might have a different kind of perception. You know, we'll think twice, three times, or I will install sprinklers for sure. Yeah, so how safe is safe? If the document okay, can be a great document, but uh, you know, you should be always challenging that. Okay, so uh, the relations, uh, it's paradoxically speaking, I can also say that very likely, uh, many fire safety you know, documents, prescriptive, they can be based as well on performance, you see? So performance theoretically uh, from based on unknown relations, such as the occupant, the relation between us and the built environment, and also between us, all of us, and the external stimuli, how I can, you know, interpret, let's say, the strobe or the, the signs and the fire, the temperature. This initial blah, 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 I think it's important because what I want to get is, you know, performances should have this holistic approach. And this book, uh, it's still, you know, as we call in English, <coughs> old but gold. And really gives you a clear understanding on performance as a whole and how we should uh, think about the design uh, on performance. I'm saying that because we are now having this influence from the green, green building certificates everywhere. And, um, you know, we emphasize comfort, acoustic comfort, thermal comfort, uh, energetic cons uh, consumption, and then we are neglecting uh, fire safety. So we should take into account all these criteria, but have safety as the paramount basis of this. The reason why I'm saying this is that I will go after that. It's all of us that we work with modeling, fire modeling, evacuation modeling, uh, you know, active fire protection system, passive. It should be together and understand the design of projects as a whole, uh, architects, engineers. Okay, I will I'll pass that. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Our work will be, although, as we said, human behavior is very important, we'll be concentrating on the relation between occupants and the built environment. All right, so basically, uh, this study we have, uh, we have used this based on some of our work in the, in the past. We have quite a few, okay. Quite a few work published, journal papers, we have our thesis, in where we challenge, for example, uh, the travel distance you know, requirement. And uh, we believe that uh, for highly dense populated environments, we shouldn't be using sometimes this, this, this parameter uh, the way we have been used. So it's a paper that we have published. You can go to our website. It's, you can download that and go into depth. Um, so what we are saying is that forget about the time of detection, time for alarming and pre-evacuation time, which is very important. We will concentrate on time to move. 
Um, the time to move can be understood as a timeline of, you know, breaking down into two small timelines. Uh, TSM, which is time to start the movement, right? Oh, sorry, time that we spend during the movement. And TSQ is the time that we spend during the queue, you see? So if you think like that, we can understand that the population density will probably play a major role in these relations. There is a, a work you probably know very well, uh, Professor Dirk, Dirk Heibing. He says that faster is slower, and we are going to explain this later on. So summarizing, well, time to escape, let's say, uh, just concentrating these timelines. It's time spent during the movement and time spent towards the XT, the queuing, etc. We have, uh, I think one of our colleagues here mentioned about DOE techniques, um, I think it was someone. And we have done a lot of optimization uh, work based on the flat Reeves uh, technique, which is a, a gradient-based uh, algorithm, and also the PSO, which is a genetic algorithm, and then try to find the optimal place to find uh, the doors. We have done many, many cases. It's also available as well. You can Google that. But basically, uh, it's well known, but we found and we proved that, uh, you know, to have a, a door, let's say, um, in the middle, the wall is worse for highly dense populated environments. And to have the door in the corner will actually improve your evacuation time performance. So we think that you know, when we increase the area of the arc towards the door, we will increase the congestion and decrease the flow rate and then increase the evacuation time. Okay, so people movement models, uh, as I call, then you can include evacuation models, pedestrian models, etc. Uh, I'm saying this because I mean you model the movement of people. It doesn't matter if it's an emergency or circulation. Uh, so you can use for fire safety engineering, you can use for urban planning, crowd safety engineering, etc. There is quite a, a, a lot of discussion, the LinkedIn about this terminology. Now I want to talk about this issue quickly as well, about the model itself. Um, well, you know, any model, any function is, is uh, attempting to represent reality. And we will always have that delta of uncertainty. That, that's clear. But if you have a good model validated as, you know, our colleagues have been discussing and checked and everything, and if you have the understanding about the phenomena that you are modeling, we can reduce that, uh, that delta, you know, substantially. And that's our work as engineers, to look beyond the black box for minimize this delta of, uh, of error as well. So we have some more stuff published. So what I'm trying to say is that, uh, um, you know, you have, uh, there's a, expression in English that rubbish in, rubbish out. So it's not only you have these whole protocols which are very important, but the understanding of the phenomenon itself, either fire or an evacuation or behavior is one of the steps. Then you have to understand the model itself and then you can model and interpret, just like statistics. You can use it for, for good or bad. So um, Another thing as well that we can limit our, our variables. Um, because if you consider many, many aspects, you know, well, life is, if you think in a very metaphysical way, life is nonlinear per se. A lot of phenomena are nonlinear. We try to make it linear um, for make this easier, right? So if you have that uh, the equation, F is equal to M, times acceleration is an equation which is, uh, is incomplete because it is other variables such as the attribute of the, the air and many things, but it works well. If you have an understanding of that function and if you insert good variables, you can work well. So what I'm saying here is make analogies that um, how important is to include some variables or not. So this is something that maybe uh, as some of your researchers 
um, try to think in a perspective as you know in the commercial field, we might waste time of uh, you know let's say trying to research how the ants behave, for example, and make an analogy. It's nice, but uh, you know, but it's very it's very virtual, and uh, we have seen these kind of things uh, happening, and people using this approach for doing real projects, and because of that. Uh, many engineers, they start to say, oh, these kind of models, they're mumbo jumbo, you know, they don't work. And we understand that because, I mean, it's, it lacks of credibility. So, um, analogy with optimization. To know, for example, the, the global minimum of a function, sometimes it can be impossible. And if you have many variables, but if you, if you try to restrict okay, your constraints, you can find a, a local minima, which can be okay as well. So um, something here that uh, you know, I've been also seeing, uh, especially in the financial field and engineers as well, I talk about Monte Carlo uh, simulation. Well, oh, you can use Monte Carlo, it, it would be okay. But you know, Monte Carlo, if you think about a design space like this square here, let's say you have your variables X and Y, ideally you should have your, your combinations or your points distributed along this design space. But Monte Carlo doesn't define that. It might pick up the, these combinations in the design space, distributed or not. So once again, increasing more uncertainty. So, okay, anyway, so, um, the model that we have used for this work is the Pathfinder, is a well-known model. It's uh, you know, well-built, validated, so you guys all know them, this, this model. Uh, and there are documents which, uh, what we have been talking here, you know, this theoretical approach, is a document also in Britain that um, we, we helped to develop, uh, explain that we can use evacuation modeling and as well fire modeling for um, you know, doing what we have said before, help to develop uh, the fire safety design or do the analysis for the fire safety management. So they are tools, they are tools. Okay, so let's go to our theoretical work. Basic, really, gosh, okay, <laughs> Jesus. Okay, I'm gonna speak now. Um, Okay, so I have two scenarios here, one and two. It's a very simple case. Uh, we populated there, crowded, and we want to check how this, how the doors location would impact the performance of the evacuation. So that's the scenarios here. I mean, it's just simple. You can go into depth on the paper. You have, you know, the paper is explained better. So, but basically, we found this that uh, you know the, the the place where you put the door in the middle increases the evacuation time. And uh, in summary, what I want to just finalize is that uh, the concept of the travel distance is, is you know based I mean, in a general way uh, in minimize the distance to the place of relative safety. Well, it works, but there is a variable that uh, depending on the case. Uh, the population density uh, in a critical factor, you know, uh, it, it will completely impact this, this law, if I can say so. So we tend to, to think, let's say, you know, uh, that it's better to put in the middle because it's short, it's more visible, let's say. But uh, actually, for crowded environments, it's better to, to have, you know, spread so you can have people evacuating in a more ordinated flow. Well, so that's, that's the paper um, that's, uh, that's actually showing the importance of the RDBE. Yeah? And, uh, and modeling can be a tool for that. You can find more about this work as well on the, the thesis. Just to finish, you can just give it. Um, if we ask to ourselves, I mean, um, in Latin, Corvadimus, where you are going in terms of the modeling process, um, I would like to take uh, the liberty to propose or maybe mention that, uh, that, I mean, that's the way I think. Uh, I might be talking, you know, 
but fire safety or safety, I cannot distinguish that from comfort. So it's all the same. And uh, we have this green building industry now, which is, which is big everywhere, sustainability. And I think, uh, think in a commercial perspective, uh, if we unite ourselves and uh, we can, for example, prove and, and convince or explain to clients that uh, uh, investment on fire safety, including modeling for a fire safety management package, uh, it's really beneficial for, for the environment. The reason why I'm saying this is that, uh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass that, just to finalize. Yeah, the reason I'm saying that is, you know, you have these uh, codes now, which are requesting, for example, people doing simulation for air quality, using as well thermal comfort, and they have been used very powerfully. And I asked myself, why? I mean, I start, I start to do modeling. Now I, I'm more a consultant, but doing modeling in 2003. And I have to say, I didn't see much evolution uh, in terms of, uh, um, uh, at least evacuation modeling specifically, into the commercial field. And I've been asked, why is that? And you know, these guys from the energy uh, environment and the beam models, they are really doing well. And I believe because they are organized themselves, and uh, probably we should look at what they have been doing for creating like, an association or create certificates and things like that. Um, that's what I'm saying. Something just to finalize well, similar to what we have for you know, the smoke detectors. You have to have this device certified and then the contractor should install this, should be certified, maintenance. So something similar as well with modeling, I, I, I suppose. Um, okay, just to, that's a very important cause. Uh, if you want more information, I do apologize for being quite quick. And everybody's quoting people here, and I think I should quote uh, two philosophers from, uh, they used to say that life is very short, there is no time for fussy, for fussy and fighting, my friend. So I think we should be, you know, fire safety and, and uh, all these other building constructions, you know, and uh, architects, we should work together. Uh, because it's a win-win situation, or it's uh, safety is going to be promoted, and it can also make more business. It's uh, it doesn't cause any harm. So, okay, thanks. Thank you. We have questions. Um, in, you were talking about the location of the exit and the, uh, some of the. Um, the location in the corner was beneficial in comparison to the exit being positioned in the, in the middle of the wall, given that there was a high density. Did you look at the threshold of the population density that, m that moved it from one place to the other? That was, there a, you know, was there a point at which density was sufficiently low that the yeah. travel distance mattered? So they could change, yeah, yeah. That's a very good point, actually. Yeah, indeed, towards the end, you know, some people start to, to, to change the, but. Uh, but was there a, the density, so there was a point when, sorry. I got was there a point when, when there was a, the population density was sufficiently low that there was no difference between the position oh, of the Oh, yeah, exit? okay, okay, yeah. Well, to, yeah, yeah, to be honest, I mean, to be honest with you, uh, I have done this work in 2010 when I was still working in the UK. Um, at some point, we, we have looked at that, and uh, I guess I put this in the, the paper, and I can send to you as well, but there was certainly towards then, but I didn't specify the, this, this data. Okay, thank you very much, okay. Rodrigo. Thanks.